Let's focus on block storage. You need to present to your EC2 instance one or more storage volumes. These disks or volumes will be attached to the EC2 operating system. The operating system would be able to format them into partitions with their file system and format them into groups of small equal-sized blocks. That represents the minimum readable or writable data size on the disk. These disks will be hosting the boot volume from which your Windows or whatever operating system boot files are kept, as well other disks or volumes to store my different datasets. In AWS, there are two types of block storage volumes, instance store volumes, and EBS volumes. Let's imagine that you are inside one of AWS data centers, you have racks of physical servers with local storage and you have also massive storage arrays. Your EC2 instance, when booted, will be hosted on one of these physical servers. The question is, where do I get my storage volumes from? We have two options actually. Option one is to get the EC2 instance a storage volume from the local storage on the physical server hosting the instance. This is called an instance store volume and the storage volume is directly attached to your EC2 instance. Option two is that we create a storage volume on one of the storage arrays and we attach it to the EC2 instance over the network. This is called an EBS, or Elastic Block Store Volume. Let me ask you a question, which one of them do you think would offer storage to the server with less latency? EBS or Instance Store? The one that is directly attached or the one over the network? Think about it. It is probably, as you have guessed, going to be the Instance Store that offers lower latency. But which do you think of the two types is more commonly adopted by customers? Think about and exclude price comparisons from your thoughts. Surprisingly, EBS is more commonly adopted, but why? Think about this scenario. You decide to power off your machine, then you decide to power it on back. Most probably, your instance will not be hosted on the same physical host, but on another host. So what happened to the data that was on the disk of the old host? How can I get to it? Your data is wiped and deleted at the moment you power off the instance. And when you power it back on again, from the new server you would get a fresh new volume. Instance store volumes are non-persistent and used only for temporary storage. For applications that are designed to consume temporary storage for temporary computations and data processing. But at the end, they are designed to move the data to another persistent storage path. I guess now you guessed why EBS is more adopted. Because EBS volumes are persistent. So, EBS as we have just mentioned, is a persistent block storage service from AWS. You create EBS volumes and attach them to your EC2 instance. For every volume, you need to choose the appropriate volume size and type. We have multiple types that offer different performance levels at different prices. A volume is created within one AZ, typically the same AZ where your EC2 instance exists. The question that might be disturbing you can be, well, we know storage devices and hard disks do fail and they will eventually fail when the disk approaches its lifetime. How can I ensure for my customers that their data on EBS will not be lost in case of disk failures? Every data block written to your EBS volumes will be replicated at least three times to three different physical devices in the same AZ. That's great, but some of you might now ask two more questions. First, what if someone deletes some of my data on the disk by mistake, how can I restore it back? Second question, you mentioned that the data is copied multiple times within the same AZ, what if the whole AZ is down or unreachable? Here comes the importance of EBS snapshots. A snapshot is actually a capture of your EBS volume at a certain point in time. You can take multiple snapshots of your volumes. You can do this manually or based on a configured schedule. 
To control the storage costs, snapshots are incremental. The first snapshot would be equal in size to your volume, but any other snapshot, size would be equal to the deltas or the changes only that have happened from this point in time and the previous snapshot state. Snapshots can be useful in case of accidental data deletion. Someone deletes some files on your machine. You can use the snapshots as recovery points to restore your volume from one of the snapshots as a new volume. Mount it, locate the deleted files, then copy them. One last thing to mention, snapshots are kept in a storage location known as a bucket that's highly available and stored in the region of the AZ of the EBS volume multiple times. So we solved the problem of accidental data deletion. Now, how can I solve the problem of one complete AZ becoming unavailable? Again, snapshots come to rescue us. Because the snapshot is stored in a highly available way in the region, I can choose to restore that snapshot as a new EBS volume in one of the other available AZs. Rebuild my EC2 and then connect my new volume to it, then you resume the operations.